Hi, my name is Benny Knopp from Noisy Post. In my last video on the Fairlight desktop console, I had a comment asking you about how plugins work with this controller. So I'm gonna take you through a few different plugins and how they map on the surface and how you can control them. First of all, I have to apologize. It's been a while since my last video, particularly about the Fairlight desktop console. I'm currently working on a feature film and I can't share the process and I'm actually working within Pro Tools for that project. So it's been hard to make any content for this console, uh, but we will get into it over the coming months and I promise to show you as much information as I can. So let's get into it. So in front of us, we have the console and we have a project open with some audio tracks and I've put some plugins already on there. Now at this stage, the only way I know to put plugins on is using the mouse and just clicking through the plugins you want to add. I haven't worked out whether you can do it with the console yet. Uh, one thing to note that once you have your plugins loaded up, if you press the plugin button, you can click between the different plugins. Now, if you close this down, which at this stage, closing a plugin down, you have to click on that window that I know of. Again, I've looked it up, can't find a shortcut for it, but I will chase up Blackmagic about that. So you can close the plugin down and it's gone. One thing is, so we're technically on the first plugin and that won't open unless you press say two or three and then it opens the other plugins and you can go back to audio plugin slot one. So you've almost got to, depending on which plugin. So if we're in plugin mode, I'm on the last plugin that I'd selected. But if you close, so we're on plugin one, right? So we're currently on plugin one. If we close it down, we press plug and then one, it won't come up. But if we go two and then back to one, it'll work. So a little glitchy thing there, I guess, something that I will talk to Black Magic about. So again, we don't, I don't know how to close it down. It's not like you can just press the plugin off button. If you press channel or, or any of the other buttons, it gives you the controllers for all those functions, but it won't close our plugin down. So it would be nice if we could press plug and that would just hide that window. Um, but it depends because you might want them open and you might put them on a second screen or something. So you might not want them to close down, but it'd be nice to have that option. You're of course going to get better functionality out of the black magic plugins because they have mapped them well uh, but they're pretty basic. So, well, this plugin particularly is pretty basic. So this is a vocal channel and, you know, it's quite simple. So we'll have a look here. We've got, you've got your on and off button. So if you press the select button does the option down the bottom. And then obviously we've got our rotary knobs. So if we, we can turn the whole thing off and on, we then have a high pass where we turn the high pass on. So you can see it's grayed out here. You can turn that on and then we can adjust our high pass. We've got our gain as well for our next uh, frequency. Now you can turn the EQ on and off. So we've got our on and on, on and off button. The one thing, so with this plugin is you don't actually have adjustment of Q. So we can uh, pick our frequency and turn it up. So we've got, you know, frequency, you can turn it up there. For our middle ones, we've either got a narrow band or a full band. Uh, and so we can adjust that there. <clears throat> and then for the other one, we can go high shelf or bell curve, but then we can't actually adjust that. But, you know, for say vocals or something, that's simple, but it might be enough to just do a bit of a shape, you know, but we're not doing anything surgical with this EQ. Uh, and then we can move on to our um, turning off and on our compression and you can pick your parameters. Uh, and then you also have your gain at the end there. So they fit all the parameters onto one bank. Now, one thing to note, so for a plugin that has more than one bank, we can go through and get to a second load. So I've just pressed plugin two, which is open up our second slot, which I've got fab filter. Now, one thing to note, if you have a blank fab filter, it won't add any of the EQ points. So if it's blank, you can't touch this plugin. So you will have to physically with the mouse click and add some points. So with a plugin like Fab Filter though, there are so many parameters that you can change on this. In fact, you can add almost an endless amount of EQ um, points. And then within that, you've got like dynamic EQ, you can make it an MS or you can do it without the LFE. There's like so many options in there. We can't cover all those in a bank. 
And so we can, if you press control and press plug, you can see there we go from one to two. So there's two banks and currently that's all we've got. And so in the future, they are going to give us more banks, but also your own customizable ones. So you will be able to, in the future, basically organize this yourself. But at the moment, there are only two banks and that's not enough for this EQ because, you know, by the time we got bank one and I've got bank two, which, you know, I, I've, is the uh, high pass filter. And then by the time we get to bank three, so this is, you know, bank three, but we actually don't. So there's your uh, dynamic EQ, but we don't even have enough to change our Q. So see, you can change the amount uh, or the threshold of the dynamic EQ there, but that's it. That's all. That's two banks. We're done. So this is not going to work for certain plugins, probably a lot of plugins at the moment, but that's okay because there'll be an update soon. So let's go to plugin three, which is also, so this is fab filter. This is their compressor and say a plugin like this, you've got two banks. It's probably enough to cover most things, but I still think, so if we go control and press plug again, we're still not going all the way through to all the options, all the parameters. So you might get your main parameters on the front, which is great. And you could control most things from there. Um, so, you know, we got, uh, we can obviously turn it off and on. That's just showing you there off and on. And, you know, we can't select There's Most of these, we don't have options for selecting. So you can select your threshold ratio. Uh, you can select that's your output. You can see the numbers on the bottom of the plugin going up. Uh, we've got our output pan. Uh, we can pick the style, whether it's clean, vocal, uh, classic, your knee, your range, we've got attack and release. So most things you got look ahead, hold, most things are on that, on that front window, except we don't have our, uh, so we got wet gain there. So that's all right. So we got most things for this plugin, which is fine. So that's not too bad. And then let's go to, so I've got my fourth plugin, uh, just pulled up a waves because, you know, I'm trying to give you a broad range of some more modern ones, some older ones, but see, you can see here with the waves one, we've got easily everything covered there. So all our rotary knobs are, you know, all covered within this within this plugin. One thing that I'm going to recommend to Blackmagic is not only closing the window down by, you know, say pressing shift and plug or something like that. That'd be cool. Or even if you just undid, you know, just turned off the plug button, that would disappear. But maybe you could have the option because I know some people might want to have those plugins left open to the side. Uh, but that would get pretty messy, I think. Um, on a second screen. One thing that I'd recommend for them is, you know, at the moment, if you want to go th bank through the different pages, you know, you have to press control and plug. But once they've got, you know, three or four pages to sit there and go back, 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 would be annoying. So I'm going to suggest that, say, we press control and then the one, two, three, four, five, six on the side here, that could bank the different plugins. One thing Blackmagic have said is they're going to have customizable rotaries for the plugins and mapping it yourself. I think that's important because within lots of plugins, there's always a few little features or switches and things that you could just click with your mouse or that you don't use very often. And it'd be nice to have the ones that you know and you love and you want to use. The Pro Q3 has so many parameters in there and some of them I would barely touch or not even use at all. And I think that it'd be great if you could just chuck those down to a further bank or you know whether you don't even customize them all because you just use the mouse for those kind of features. And then it means you can put the ones you use predominantly, like to be able to sweep, you know, fix the cue, fix the frequency, fix the gain, and then that's it. So that's how you use this console with Fairlight plugins and third party plugins. Now, I know it's not a great demonstration and I probably could go through all the plugins that I've got and, and show you how they work, but just note that it has a long way to go. This console with only two pages uh, of banks does need more. It really does because there's so many plugins now that would have so many more parameters. But that is one thing to think about is, is a console really going to work great with lots of the new modern plugins anyway? Because a lot of the times they do have so many parameters and so many things you can do. A traditional console that only has a handful of rotaries is probably not set up for it. And unfortunately, a mouse is just the way to go with those things. I'd love to hear from you guys what kind of plugins you're using and what kind of control you want to have. And if you've got any thoughts that I can pass on to Blackmagic while they're doing upgrades to this. I'm going to do my best to keep producing videos for you guys to really see this console uh, and how it's worked because I know both this and the editor that they've made 
Uh, there's not many videos on them online, so I'm gonna do my best to bust out some more videos for you so you can really see how this could be usable in your own situation. I just wanna say a big thank you to anyone who has been encouraging in the comments and ask questions as well, because I want that interaction with the community. I wanna be helpful to you guys. I wanna share knowledge. I wanna share the fact that I have this and can produce videos and give you the information you need, knowing that there's not a lot out there on this controller and the editor as well, which I would love to get my hands on. Black magic, so that I can show you how to do some really quick editing in that as well. But I uh, appreciate your time and please subscribe and like and all that usual stuff and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.